developers from the British Expeditionary Force. You are here in Dunkirk and you are surrounded by the enemy. There is only one way to survive the sea evacuation to your home country. It is only 80 kilometers, but the bay is too shallow for our warships and we don't have too, not, too much of them. It's time for Operation Dynamo. You need to use little ships of the Dunkirk, about 850 private boats. They are distributed and available special for you via Boats API. Please use them in a responsible and resilient way. Good luck. My name is Tomasz Skowronski and today I will say more about resilience patterns, how to use them not only in a sea evacuation case, but in everyday development. Let's start with rate time limiter. Do you know this feeling when you stay in long queue, very long one, like this one, and ask why does it happen always, always only for me? The answer is time limiter. What timeout is, everybody knows, but what is time limiter? You can think about it as if it were a timeout factor. With resilience for j uh, without annotations, without uh, reflection or aspect-oriented programming, you can add, configure, and uh, measure timeout to any future supplier. Now it's time for rate limiter. It is, this time it is also about time, but here time has different meaning. Because rate limiter limits not the duration of execution, but the number of executions in the same time period. So let's see how it works on the example. In Resilience 4J, uh, you, you can configure all components in similar way. That means you can retrieve them for the register or create using builder. You can use custom, that means uh, default values, but you shouldn't do it even if you know default values because of readability. So what you need is configuration of component like this. I will talk more about uh, parameters later. The name, it will, of course, it should be better. Uh, it will be used for metrics, and that is all. Now you need to use your component with your method. In the case, this method is implementation of runnable, but uh, in contrast to Hestrix, you don't need uh, in extend uh, Hestrix command class. You can just provide runnable, callable, uh, function, supplier, consumer, future, almost every uh, standard Java interface. In this case, we decorate our method, method evacuate with created just before rate limiter. So what uh, this limiter do? We, it is configured in, the, in this case, in this way that uh, we limit only for one executions for each two seconds time window. This time window isn't movable. So, it shouldn't be surprised then if we call it once and second time, the second call is rejected and not permitted. Uh, Resilience 4J, in contrast to Hestrix, which had uh, three dependencies and each of them had uh, own dependencies, Resilience 4J has only one dependency. It is waiver, now previously as a, a Java slang. And uh, you can, but you don't need to use it because uh, Waver isn't part of public API of Resilience 4J. But it is good to use, for example, try. Try is like uh, optional, but in case, of, in case of failure, it isn't empty. It contains the exception, the reason of the failure. So in this test, I use try just to prevent code like this. We don't need no try and catch. Let's use uh, try. So, in the second case, there is very similar configuration, uh, but the second call was permitted. Why? Because sometimes it is better to delay executions, maybe there will be place for this execution in next time period, than retry. And retry is another resilience pattern. Probably it is the most popular, the, most, the, the simplest one, and the most dangerous. Why? Because uh, you can configure just a few things in uh, retry. First is the number of attempts, what is obvious. 
The second is interval function. Defaultly, it is constant time, but you should probably replace it with uh, some uh, provi provided by resilience for the function like expansional backoff or maybe some randomized. You can write custom function. It is a function of uh, number of attempts, uh, current attempt. And uh, some conditionals. You can make your retry more sm intelligent, smarter. That means you can define exceptions, you can define function of exception or function on result. And for example, say, my retry should work only for uh, server error exceptions. That means if status of response is higher than 500 or, or equal, it should be retried. Not if it is bad request, 400, 404, et cetera. The next uh, pattern, my favorite one, is bulkhead. Let's imagine this situation. One boat, 20 people, and only four paddles this summer. And now for people with less imagination, just see how it will look in our code. We have here two methods. Uh, paddle now, where we, act tried, uh, where, where we access our paddles uh, resource pool, uh, use them for 100 millis and return to the pool. And the second method, everybody in the boat, when, where we create 20 threads and start them at the same moment. And let's look how it will work in the first naive uh, scenario uh, without any limitations. There are 20 different threads, that means 20 of the soldiers try to use four paddles at the same moment. So it shouldn't be surprised that the number of available paddles on the right is sometimes below zero. What doesn't make sense because it should be between zero and four. Okay, let's synchronize our paddle now method and look what happened. Now you can see that there are still 20 different threads, even there are only four paddles. What is more, some of the threads try to sleep. We shouldn't do it in the, full, in the boat full of 19 unknown people. And the number of available paddles is always free. Why? Because we add synchronization and we can use only one, one paddle now at the same moment. But so it doesn't make sense because we have four of them. So let's add a thread pool bulk. Like in Hystrix, Resilience 4J provides two kinds of uh, bulkhead. That means uh, they have different isolation strategies, uh, fretful based and semaphore based. So uh, we can use first of them here and limit the number of threads to number of paddles. Let's see what happened. Even we, we created 20 different threads, uh, only four of them uh, were permitted. You can see that there are only four different threads in the logs. And the number of available paddles is never below zero. What is good, but there are still some unnecessary executions. Why? Because of uh, implementation thread pool, it uh, require, uh, require queue, and the minimal size is one. And so even if we decrease this size of queue to one, there still will be one unnecessary call. But if we use semaphore-based bulkhead, it is the answer for our pr problem. Even there are 20 threads, uh, 20 soldiers in the boat, only four of them can use four paddles. So we can think about bulkhead as if it is where, uh, some kind of uh, pool limitation. And fallback. What fallback is? Some example like on the picture, Let's imagine uh, that sometimes it is b better to receive any boat, even it can't swim, than nothing. It is better to receive any boat than a server exception. Maybe some more realistic uh, example. Let's imagine you are HBO Go and your recommendation service doesn't work. Then nothing work. Okay, maybe it wasn't best resilience example, so let's again try again. Let's imagine you are Netflix and your recommendation service doesn't work. Then, as, uh, if you are a client of this service, you can use fallback and display, for example, the list of the most popular movies, or even empty list as a fallback will be better than server exception. I will show an example of this pattern and component. Uh, 
and show a fine deco decorator. decorator. Uh, what is fine? Uh, it is just um, a Java library similar to Retrofit when you can create uh, HTTP client from, HTTP, uh, from Java interface. So what you need is simple Java interface where you have a definition of your endpoints, like here. There is no implementation. It is generated by uh, Retrofit or Fine. And you, you can, with Fine, you can build your HTTP client. You don't need more uh, REST uh, template or something like this. And if you use Resilience uh, for J extension, you can add also some uh, resilience patterns like circuit breaker, fallback, or rate limiter. And for example, our fallback here is just an uh, alternative implementation of this interface. That means uh, it is better sometimes to receive empty list instead of exception, or some dummy uh, boat instead of exception or null. And there was also condition that means we want this uh, fallback only when it is a server fault, not it is, it is, if it is a bad request. And now we can use this. So in this test, our server always respond with uh, our server always we respond with error. So if we try uh, to find the bot which doesn't exist, minus minus one, uh, we will receive e even there is a s um, but uh, response from server. We will is receive our default dummy bot. It is example of uh, fallback. Let's look here that there is uh, no here there is no uh, wrapping, no decorating, because we don't need uh, now decorate our uh, get both method. Our all HTTP client, our uh, all uh, HTTP API uh, client is decorated with uh, circuit breaker and uh, this uh, fallback. There are still, of course, more uh, extensions. So if you don't want to use functions uh, or decorators or builder, you can still, and you prefer annotations, uh, aspect oriented programming, reflections, you can still use your Spring annotations. The same if you use a reactive operator, you can use uh, operators, you can use extension for Spring Reactor or Rx Java. And uh, Resilience 4J doesn't support, doesn't provide um, Hystrix dashboard, what it makes sense. But because each component emits uh, metrics, you can simply connect them with your favorite metrics library. And circuit breaker time. If you heard about Hystrix, you must heard about circuit breaker. Let's look at the Resilience 4J logo. But not this one. Hystrix is dead. You should know it. Let's look at the Resilience 4J logo and just remember three words. Closed, open, and half open. There are three states in each circuit breaker. Default one is closed. How it works in practice? So our server in this test is, will always respond with errors. There is some circuit breaker definition. We also capture um, events emitted by our, by our circuit breaker because each component not only provides metrics, but also provide, uh, but also emits events. And we try to get our boats from by API via circuit breaker. There will be 10 calls to our API, some break, and again, four calls. Let's see what happened. First four calls will be uh, will, uh, will end with error because our server doesn't work. Great. After four calls, uh, that uh, our circuit breaker has enough knowledge uh, to, to check should it switch to a uh, different state or no. Why for? Because of buffer size, uh, buffer uh, size in closed state, uh, and circuit breaker needs uh, contains here history of your calls. That means only successes or failures knowledge. And if it is uh, failures, uh, the number of failures is bigger th than threshold, 
uh, the default one is half, uh, it switched to closed state. And when uh, circuit breaker is in closed state, it doesn't permit to more calls. Uh, our uh, in closed state, sorry, in, op uh, in open state, our backend is closed. And uh, after some break, our circuit breaker can verify uh, maybe it's time to check. Maybe backend is, uh, go, is, uh, is working now. And Hestrix defaultly uh, allowed to one check. Uh, here we, but in Resilience 4J, we can configure the number of size in uh, open, the number of buffer in open state. And there is, there is a configure two. So two calls are permitted. But because they, the, after two calls, there is still more errors than successes, uh, our circuit breaker back to uh, open state. And no more calls are permitted until next verification. So at the result, you can see that even there were 14 calls to our circuit breaker, only six of them uh, hit uh, our backend. It is good, because if it doesn't work, it doesn't make sense to check it or retry again. So our server has time, uh, had time to be restarted. There was time to um, load balancing, etc. So you can think uh, about a circuit breaker as if it were a failure cache, because it limits potentially failing uh, executions. Of course, there is a normal, decor normal cache, tra traditional cache uh, decorator also in Hestrix. It is just a metaphor. Failure cache is circuit breaker. So you can think that uh, resilience patterns aren't complex. It, of course, uh, the Dunker evacuation, which took uh, eight days, was more hard and difficult, especially because of fighters and boomers. Uh, patterns are simple because the question isn't uh, how they work, but how to connect them and when to use them in existing system. What is more, there are more patterns, and not only of them best match with uh, base code. What I showed were resilience patterns, uh, which great pa matches to your code, but there are higher layers. For example, using containers, you can limit not only threads, but also memory. You can also apply resilience patterns in API Gateway, Service Mesh, or even in a cloud platform like Health Check or Load Balancing. So it, is just a, it should be just a beginning of your resilience adventure. But and what should you remember after this talk? First, don't apply every pattern, and not because it is simple and you can add more decorators, more layers, but because uh, it doesn't make sense to use all of them, and you shouldn't connect them in the wrong order. Let's imagine what happened if you use retry and circuit breaker in the wrong order. It doesn't make sense. Don't decorate everything, not only because you can use uh, annotations, but because sometimes it is good to know when something doesn't work, and fast, uh, fail fast is also often better than fail safe. And use metrics, not only for colorful dashboard, but first, you need when your system doesn't work, if you, has, if you have fallbacks, it isn't clear because you don't see it in UI. And you, what is more, you need metrics just for your configuration tuning. How to configure circuit breaker, you need to measure it. And even my examples were related to HTTP, Circuit, uh, then that doesn't mean that Resilience 4J or even Resilience components are dedicated for network. Uh, you can apply them anywhere when the executions is unpredictable. That means file system operations, network operations, everything will depend on time or threads and can end with a timeout or with unexpected results. Potentially, it is good to think about resilience in this case. So that is all from me. Thank you for your attention. Forget about Agile, just be resilient. Thank you.